Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we've got a nice little piece of English walnut here, which I'm going to make a nice, small, elegant bowl from. Uh, now, that in itself isn't much of a project, so what I want to try and do is make a, a unique stand for it. How I'm going to make the stand, I've got quite a few ideas, uh, but I haven't quite worked everything through yet, so stay tuned and we'll see how we get on. Right, the first part of the stand, I'm trying to make a uh, a mould of my fingers, something for the bowl to stand on. So I'm going to make a mould using alginate uh, in this little beaker. Fingers are going to be in something like that position and hopefully that'll be okay for it to sit on. Right, so I'm going to mix up some alginate and we'll take it from there. This is a two to one ratio, uh, two parts water, one part arginate. So 100 grams of arginate. There's plenty left if I make a mistake. So for that, we're gonna reset that and then now add 200 grams of water. Now this is quick set, so we're gonna have to move a bit sharpish on this once we get it mixed. Right, 200 grams. Knock any of the air bulbs out. Let's take a watch off. Right, that kind of position. Okay, it's not a fantastic casting. Right, I'll leave that to one side. I'm gonna make up another one. But I'm gonna cast fingers uh, separately. Right, let's see if I can get my fingers out. Now this is actually the second time I've uh, tried this. The first attempt went terribly because the plaster of Paris I had, uh, I'd bought during lockdown. And what I didn't know is that plaster of Paris only has a uh, finite lifespan. Uh, I made casts just in this way, but when I poured in the mix that I'd pre-made, uh, it didn't set. It's only then that I decided to quickly Google and I found out that it had gone off. So I've got 25 kilo of plaster of Paris, which unfortunately I've got no use for, or just can't be used. Anyway, this is fresh stuff, which I've just had delivered yesterday. So hopefully we won't have a problem. Now I know some of these casts are better than others, but I'm gonna cast a whole lot and see what we get out of it.
will sit and hopefully degas themselves. We'll come back in a little while and see how it looks. Okay, these have had sufficient time to uh, to set up, so we'll free them from their mould and see how we've got on. the thumb. <laughs> Sorry. Oh dear. Okay. Not bad. terrible as well. Right, those two I don't think we can save. First these guys, let's do a bit of work on them and see how we can get on. Right, I think we've got three or four usable fingers from this. I'm going to go and get a, uh, some bits of sandpaper and uh, like a nail file, I guess, would work. And see if I can clean them up into a usable state for a moulding. Right, I'll bring you back when I've got that done. I managed to get the fingers cleaned up. Cleaned up six in total and I've gone with the best three that kind of give me the best placement for the base. Oops. <laughs> Which is going to be tricky. I might just put a bit of tape down just to hold them in place. So I've got a bit of sandpaper just to sand them on. Okay, all fingers are about the same distance apart from each other. And they're all pretty much the same height. So that should hopefully give us a nice triangular base for the finger bowl. All right, so just carefully move this there. I'll just quickly make up some more plaster of Paris. Should be about enough. carefully. Set. Right, while we're waiting for the plaster to set up, we'll just create this little finger bowl.
essentially this is going to have a completely curved bottom so we just need to leave a bit of meat on it so we can grab it but then enough afterwards so we can uh, get it to the right shape you want at the end uh, we're going to be holding it with button jaws at the end so it's going to make sure i've got the right size my button jars it. jaws aren't exactly massive right i'll just square this up so we can grab it and turn it around and get ready for turning it and uh, doing the inside It's a chance to sit, so we're just going to use a bit of. Uh, Yorkshire grit. And then finishing off with my shellac and oil mix. Before we turn it around and put it into the button jaws, I'm just going to put a bit of tape around the edge just to protect it. finger bowl. Okay we're back. Nervous, excited, all the things above. I've got my uh, finger disc, as we shall now call it, ready. Uh, I couldn't find a, the right size pot to cast it in so I've just got some uh, thick plastic and made a mould uh, ready to set it in. I've uh, used hot melt glue around the edge to uh, create a waterproof, uh, sorry, watertight seal, fingers crossed. And I've just set it on an old piece of Perspex which I had left over from another build. So that's going to go in there and then I'm going to pour in uh, a silicone mould uh, to fill it. Alright, so I'm just going to put this out of the way for a second while we make up the silicone. Now, I've never used silicon before so this is going to be interesting I've got the measurements and I've read the instructions so I'm going to mix up 500 mil of this silicon 
I'm gonna add the hardener. Right. Anyway, right, okay, close enough. Just over 500 mil. Right, I'll reset that. I'll add 10 grams of the hardener. Earth. Right, my scales have gone potty, but I presume this is a 20 mil because it's designed to make a litre. So I'm going to have to estimate half of this. Right, okay. Fingers deeply crossed. It's just harder to mix than I initially ex expected, so my wooden fork isn't going to cut it. So I've got a metal rod. That should be enough. Right now we pour it into our mould. the edges first. Right, slight issue, I can still see the top of the fingers, which means I don't really have enough. So I was going to make up another Let's say another 100 grams. Let's move this to one side. Now we wait. I shall keep my fingers permanently crossed. All right, we're back, it's the next morning. It's time to take this out of the mold. Well, that's still intact. Looks pretty good. Can't see any air bubbles in there. Awesome. Right, I'll get this cleaned out and then we'll try it with a bit of resin. Right, ready to start casting the mold. Uh, we're going to use glass cast 50, which degasses itself very well because, as you are probably aware, I don't have a pressure pot. Uh, I know how much resin I need to make because when I was cleaning out the mold, I uh, filled it full of uh, isopropyl alcohol uh, and then measured the amount that it took to fill it. So I need about 80 grams in total. So we 
need 60 gram of this part. And need 27 grams for the hardener. Blue dye. Trying to swirl it around in the sides and the inside bits just to make sure that it removes any air pockets from the fingertips. There you go, no waste. Now's the moment of truth. Has this worked? I'm just gonna go for it. Okay. Not quite what I expected. I may have demolded it a bit too soon. It's beautifully clear on that side. This side's kind of like a, a shot gla glass finish to it. So I'm gonna do a bit of research and find out why. And if I need to do something else, we'll do something else otherwise. We'll figure out what the next step is. Right, I've done a bit of research and if your mold isn't shiny, you're not gonna get a shiny casting out of it, which is fair enough. Uh, leaving it like this can be an interesting uh, look. Uh, if we did put light underneath it, which we're hopefully gonna be doing soon, uh, it would give like a diffuse lighting. Uh, but I'd like to see if we can get it clear. So the best way to do that is to cover it with another thin layer of resin uh, and that will hopefully make it shiny. Uh, I'm wanting to make another casting because this first one we've got a few little uh, bits of muck in here which were obviously in the casting in the first place so I'm going to make enough resin up to cover this over and then make another pour in here. I don't know if you can see that but where I've gone over with the resin it's pulled away from the surface like there's an oil on there or something. Not quite sure where I where that's happened, but it's okay. When you do things for the first time, you can't expect everything to go through perfectly. So we're gonna set that to one side. Not quite giving up on it yet. We've got enough resin here to make another casting. Give this another three days. Okay, the other cast came out well, but I'm just gonna use this one, uh, which was the first one we made, just to start making the base for it. Uh, in the end, I just to try and get some shine on it, I ended up putting uh, some normal spray lacquer on it, which seems to work quite well. 
but just show an awful lot of the imperfections in the surface. Uh, the second one I've left matte because it does dif uh, diffuse the light very, very nicely. So anyway, we're going to use this as a template to make the stand. Uh, I'm going to use the same type of wood as we used to make the, the finger ball, or wobble ball, or whatever we're going to use it to call it. And now we're going to just mount this on. I'm using a face plate because I don't want too deep a hole in it, which you would normally get with uh, a worm screw. That's all that needs. Just send it. I just cleaned it off with isopropyl. I'm just going to put a, a shellac based sealer on. this in straight away. No need to sit around over this one. Yeah, it's quite a nice shine. Right, we can turn it around now and uh, start on the inside. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is just face this off and then we will try and cut in a recess big enough to take our fingers. we've got here is about 103 mil so I'm gonna mark on here 50 we'll get it to that or well, nearly up to that and then we'll expand it bit by bit until it fits. Just a quick sanity check, make sure that I've measured correctly. bit deeper, no wider, just a little bit deeper. Perfect. Right, now as if for the because we're wanting to 
add some lights to this. I we'll need to go down deeper. But I also want to add a little rim just in case. And I'll explain the reason for that in a little while. So yeah, let's make this hole a bit deeper and add a, a second rim. Okay, the next nerve-wracking bit is I'm going to drill a hole through here for the wire. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to sand up this rim and finish that. Just touch up that little bit there with a bit of sandpaper. Then we can start the exciting bit. Right, uh, we're about ready uh, to put this lot together, but before I work on the internals, I'm gonna put some uh, small felt feet on the bottom. Now I've got my center marker here to help with the process because I'm gonna put three on, and these come with three handy gauge lines here. So I need to get this as central as possible. Right, now I've had plenty of pondering on what kind of lights to put in this. Uh, now I'm not great at soldering and, and everything like that, so I wanted to try and put something together which would be fairly easy and fairly cheap to replicate. So what I came up with was uh, these copper LED lights. Now I do want to worry about uh, making holes for batteries and things like that as well, so I've managed to get hold of one that just comes with a simple USB. So the purpose of drilling the hole was just so I can feed this through and make a nest, as it were, in the center. So I'll we'll get that in now. <laughs> These things are worse than Christmas lights. Right, I'm gonna feed it all through and then worry about positioning in the center, in a second, sorry. Now I did a couple of tests, not in a pot like this, just uh, putting the, uh, the resin on top. And I wasn't sure if this amount of lights is gonna to be too bright, uh, but they can be cut down very easily. So we're gonna include them all first and then we'll figure out if we need uh, less. The reason for putting this second uh, edge here was if you were using a, a clear resin, then you can put some sort of diffuser on there, depending on what kind of light you're using. Uh, the finish I've got on the piece I'm putting in has a very granular effect on it, so it doesn't really need a, a diffuser putting in but I put them there just for future proofing. All right, this is the second casting we made. That fits in there beautifully. All right, the last part of the puzzle is our little finger bowl to put on the top. 
and there we have it. It's been a, <laughs> it's been an exciting project. It's been a very long-winded one. It's, I think we're in the, just started the, the third week of this now. So, I spent an awful lot of time thinking about this project. I've even had dreams of casting things. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun. One thing that I am happy about is now we have this mould in this configuration, is that I can use it for other things. If you remember back, if you've seen some of my videos, I made a very, very large sphere. And I kept on saying to myself, I've got to make a stand for it, but it can't be just standard. So now I've got a stand. I've got a nice glass ball in my office, and I shall stand that on it for a while. Uh, and I've got the cast so I can make different colors. Uh, if you did put a diffuser on in there, you could cast one out of clear resin and then put a, uh, like a color changing light inside. That would be very nice and effective. So this may not be a large project, but it has an awful lot of potential. All right, so anyway, I've uh, teased this long enough. Let's see how it looks when it's lit. And hit the lights. There we go. One finger bowl made from English walnut, resin, plaster cast, silicone, and fairy lights. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly had a great time making it. If you have any comments you'd like to make, any ways to improve it, then please leave them in the comments section below. Uh, if you've enjoyed the videos, then I would very, very much uh, gratefully uh, request that you hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, it helps me out an awful lot to get to our goal of a thousand subscribers. And if you leave a comment as well, we're gonna be giving away a bowl uh, to somebody who's made a comment on any of my videos made before we reach the thousand. So that's it from me. And I shall see you again very soon. But apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching. Alexa, turn on fingers. Okay.